Here we see the hospitalizations in South Africa. And this is what uh, an Omicron wave looks like. So eight or nine weeks and, uh, and then the hospitalizations are down dramatically in South Africa. And in fact, if we look at the current situation, there, we see that. So quite incredible here. We've got 5,800 patients in hospital and, and most of those are in critical facilities. And the amount of patients on oxygen in the whole country of 60 million people is uh, 708 people on oxygen in South Africa who've been diagnosed with SARS coronavirus 2 COVID disease. So really quite incredible. So here we have the United States. Now, here, here we have the uh, trend in daily number of cases. There's no question that the number of cases are going down, but I am expecting them to blip up. And you probably know why I'm expecting them to blip up for a short period of time at least. And that's because the BA.2 variant will become predominant in the United States in the next few weeks, I believe. And that's 50% more transmissible. So there will be an uptick for a short period of time. I don't believe there's more people going to get sick or hospitalised or die. I think this Omicron, this BA.2, is an Omicron, the same as BA.1. But it is more contagious, 50% more contagious. So that could well cause an uptick in cases in the States. Sad to see that the number of deaths in the States are still so high. That's on that graph there. And the, now this one here is hospital admissions, and we do see it going down slightly. But of course, with the BA.2, that could actually go up a little bit, uh, albeit for a short period of time. And that's the number of people in hospital now, which we can clearly see there is a downward, there is a downward trend in the United States, but higher than it's ever been. I mean, we know that there's more comorbidities, uh, an older demographic in the population, but not really so much more than the UK, although there is more comorbidities. We know that vaccination rates are somewhat lower in the States. Just summary data from the UK. Uh, people testing positive down and flattening out. Uh, there could be a slight uptick on that. In fact, I think there will be a slight uptick on that because the BA.2 is going to take over shortly. This is patients admitted to hospital, which is going down. Again, that could go up slightly for a short period of time because of the BA.2 effect. Not because it's making people sicker, just because there's going to be more people contracting the virus all at the same time. Deaths within 28 days of a positive diagnosis, roughly flat in the, in the UK. Well, clearly we can see that double vaccination is reducing the, the, the incidence of long COVID. I think that's pretty clear from this large-scale ONS data. But of course, this data was collected in the time of Delta. So the long COVIDs we're getting now were collected in the original wave, the alpha wave or the, or, or the Delta wave. Um, not, doesn't tell us what's going to happen in the Omicron wave. There's good news and bad news this week. The bad news is that cases have started to come up again and we have very high rates of Omicron and around one in 30 in the country and it's not going to go away anytime soon. The better news is that it still appears to be relatively mild in most people. It's not causing major hospitalizations and deaths. And overall, excess deaths in January were less than you would have expect for an average uh, winter. Now, the Main problem I think we're facing is staff absences in, in critical services, in the NHS and in care homes. And there's increasing evidence that that is now improving rapidly. We hope that the shorter isolation periods will help that uh, and speed that up. While many have remained the same, we've seen a significant increase in reports of sore throats and hoarse voice so that the frequency of those is, is commoner than it was. These are much commoner now with Omicron than they were with uh, other variants, particularly Delta. So uh, sore throats are a really key sign of Omicron and people describe it as being a scratchy type of uh, sore throat or very painful, something they're not really found before with, with other colds. And we have some new information about duration. Uh, we've been talking about this, but our data is getting clearer now. We've matched about 3,000 of your contributions. 
uh, with two or three doses. Uh, 3,000 people had it with Omicron, 3,000 people had it with Delta. And from this data, we found that about 70% of people with Omicron recover within a week. We need to point out this data isn't for unvaccinated people that will probably have a longer duration and more severe, uh, or people who had a single dose. I think that the other, for me, the, the, the key is that under Delta, it was only about 15% got better within three days. So the minority, whereas with Omicron, it's 33% uh, a third. And I think that's a big difference. So many people uh, will get better, test negative, and get back to normal life uh, within those five days. And we have to be also be aware that reinfections are commoner than people thought. This figure of one in around one in 10 people is quite reasonable. And so just having had Delta before doesn't mean that you aren't going to get Omicron. Having had uh, the uh, first version of Omicron doesn't mean you're not going to get the new version of Omicron. Obviously, you need to keep uh, an eye on the data, but let's not make any assumptions. Omicron is obviously not over yet. Cases are going to be around for a while. We need to start uh, living with it uh, and realizing that whilst cases are high we have to be careful but we don't have to stop living as long as we all behave responsibly.